Where, where, where do you want it, Sir George? Ah, I want it up, of course. Up where? Where it used to be, over the fireplace. Who do you think we are, Samson and Hercules? It's uncommon heavy, Sir George. Just bad enough lugging it up from the cellar. It should never have been in the cellar, damn it. At that place, we're going to cut my KCMG. That's no fortune. Winterhalter, don't you know? Today's fine. Winterhalter, the artist fella. Yes. Signed it on the bottom. Oh. Funny place to sign it. What? Yes. No, the bottom of the painting. Oh. Oh, oh yes. Uh, Winterhalter, yes. It's very like you, said George. Isn't it's it? funny. Yes, absolutely filthy. What? Uh, the, the painting. Oh. Uh. Forward! Oh, yeah. Wait, this is no oh, okay. Silly old gherkin. I was painted once. Was I engraved? I should think you was more than likely knitted. What? There. Impossible. Nonsense. Seems silly to bother, really. There's no one to look at it. I shall look at it. Well, before you're as dead as a landed herring, stop living in the past. But that's when I did live. Confound you. Well, don't go getting angry. It ain't my fault. You be angry if you'd seen a symbol of your former greatness down in the cellars behind an old mangle. Look, Sir George, I've been here a lot longer than you have. Yes, and got used to it. No, I ain't. And I've a fanny, have you, Fanny? What? I often go into the orangery and I look at myself in that old mirror and I say, is that really you, Bodgie? And all the time I know it ain't, because I can see the wall behind me through my kneecap. Go on patrol, skirmish in the hill, the thunder of a distant cannonade. <coughs> yes, well, uh, hold up, yep. Yeah. A little ballad, a little ballad entitled, You're going to keep your spirits up, or you don't stand a ghost of a chance. No? No. It's got a haunting little tune. No. Did you hear about the Banshee? Well, not another Irish joke. He thought that being exorcised meant going for a 20 mile walk. No? No. Uh, any time to cheer you up at all? Oh. Oh. White lady. White lady. Oh. Hi! What the Gloriana are you up to? I always do the stairs on Thursdays. How do you know it's Thursday? It's roughly Thursday. Oh. Oh, she's going to keep that up for a while. No idea. Could go on for hours. Oh, oh shut up! Don't you shout at me, you common little man. If I want to do the stairs, then do the stairs I shall. Oh! Well, madam! If you must howl, could you not be a little more restrained about it? I've completely lost the urge now. Good. Then you can give us a hand with this. Oh, we shall need some steps. Oh, well, there's some in one of the bedrooms. There are 22 bedrooms. I will show you. Ah, good. Stand fast. <coughs> Bless you. What for? You sneezed. No, I didn't. Are you sure? Of course I'm sure. A fellow knows he sneezed or not, don't he? That's funny. That's funny. It's a trace, sir. It's one of us or one of them. I don't know. Go and have a look round. You go. You, no, I'm holding this. Well, so am I. Yeah, well, I'm more scared than you are. Are you? All right, I'll go. No what? Well, you're more scared than I am. Well, if I wasn't, I'd be going to look, wouldn't I? Body? Bodkin? Yes. Why don't Fanny answer? Because she can't hear you. That's what you want to think, isn't it? Yes. 
Because you're a coward. Who are you calling a coward? You are. No, I'm not. Yes, you are. I convinced you. Here we are. Where's Fanny? Uh, here I am. What's up? You look as if you've seen a person. <laughs> Plain common or garden. Now you see me, now you don't. Ghost. Think so. Oh, sure, then. I can't see anything. Come on out and show yourself, you coward. Get up there. Then it's thrust the beggar out. Up the applause! Oh, do put that thing away. Forward! Wait for me. Well, I ain't playing hide and seek. Where do you think you're going? Come here, Master Sneezer, and no more vanishing tricks. <laughs> Bless you. Hey! That's for the spectacles, and you'll get another one if you get me into trouble again. If I can. Got more sauce than a pig. All right, don't pull me here off. What's your name? Matt. You work. Matt, isn't it? Well, any mats are better for a good beating. What sort of mat are you? Doormat, bath mat, or prayer mat? Leave off them. That was stable work. Well, then, why don't you get back there? Why should I? Because I say so. That's why you horrible little carpet. What are you doing here? Apart from causing a nuisance. I don't mind to see the house. Oh, thank you. Why don't you come here? Do what? Well, leave the stables and come here. See? Been all over the grounds, I have. Fishing, birds nesting. Lucky young woodcock. Lucky, will he? Ah. They've been beyond the gates, of course. I've never been in here till today. Oh, Bishop, you must have been. I ain't. Yeah, groom said it'd be whipped. That's all right. It's all right. I'm on my own. I've been on my own all the time. How long is that? I don't know. Wait, who was keen? That one. George the third. Yeah, that's my lucky penny. Is it? Still is. <laughs> it would be. Who are you anyway? Me? I'm Bodkin. Bodkin? What a funny name. It's meant to be I'm a fool. You know what a fool is, don't you? Yeah, dear. Groom said I was one. Oh, not a fool. You fool. A fool. A clown. A jester. You've got to be able to sing and dance. Play something. Know how to tumble. Tell a few jokes even. I just left the Globe. The Globe? And it's a theatre in London. And I got the job, fool, to Sir Richard Uproar. He brought me here. Funny man, Sir Richard. No sense of humour. I could never make him laugh. Why not? He was too thick. I tried everything. I sat up all night thinking of simple little jokes just for him, but he never understood them. What happened? Well, in the end, he got so angry that he had me slung in the lily pond. <laughs> Do you know, Sonny? He thought that was the funniest thing he'd ever seen. Rolled on a lawn, hooted with laughter. I thought he was going to have a fit. 
Well, that was it. Every time we wanted cheering up, in I went. Any visitors came, splash. Winter or summer, just the same. Had to break the ice sometimes. <laughs> ah, no joke, then, Tommy. I had a permanent cold. Finished me in the end. It was the cold that finished me. Huh? I thought you'd been snug enough in the stables. It was light and damp in here. And the wind was like a knife in winter. What happened to him? Said George. <laughs> he got full of brandy one night and fell down them stairs. Be his hundredth anniversary soon, so I suppose you'll have to do it all over again. Family, that's Sir Francis. He's his great great grandfather. What does he do? Precious little lazy young tight. Gambled away the family fortune. Fought a lot of duels. A real rake. You know what a rake is, don't you? A long wooden thing. Yeah, that's for me. What about Earl and wife? We don't really know who she is. She reckons she don't know either, but I'm not so sure. She, she's been around as long as I can remember. You're all company to each other, aren't you? Yeah, I suppose so. I'm glad you heard all my jokes. Here, here's a good oh, one. Oh, best be getting back. No, 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 wait. Uh, these three galley slaves, see? No, honest, they better go. Yeah, all right. So long, Tom. Here. Are you going to tell them it was me? No. Give them something to puzzle over. Hey, before you go, why did you come today? Why today, eh? Inside the ocean, you mean? Yeah. I wanted to look at it before they pulled it down. What did you say? I said. I wanted to see inside Motley Hall before it got pulled down. believe it. The boy's lying. I won't. Absurd. Sir Humphrey won't stand for it. Sir Humphrey's got no choice in the matter. He's D-E-A-D. -E Humphrey, go on to earth. Disgusting. Yeah. Last uproar. The very last. <laughs> the joke ended. Another one of your stupid jokes, ain't it? It ain't. I heard him. Heard who? These two men, the king and the stables, it was them, you see. He was talking about someone who died. Sir Humphrey. Died? One was tall and thin, and the other was stocky and always smiling. The tall one said, he's dead, so they'll have to sell Motley now. Then the stocky man asked him if he could fix it. Then the tall man winks at him and says, if I say Motley's not safe, they'll have to come down. Not safe, the man's an idiot. Just a minute, Sir George. Go on, man. Then the stocky man said, Thousand few know, and the rest when the place is down. Then the tall man says, If I sign this, something harder. Demo something. Demolition. Aye, that was it. Demolition. If I sign the demolition order, nothing on earth can save Motley Hall. <laughs> Whoa. <laughs> Whoa. She's all Whoa to Motley Hall. I wish you were. Was that all? I mean, didn't they say anything else? No, nope. the end of it. The end of us, more like. Stuck out in the open, that's where we'll be. The bell. Aye? The bell in the tower. I always ring it when there's a death in the family. I thought it was supposed to ring by itself. <laughs> Don't be ridiculous, how could it? Madam, I'm a great believer in tradition, but this is hardly the time for phantomology. Yeah. Or bell ringing. The locals expect it. Besides, it's in the guidebooks. But look here. Oh, let her ring the blessed bell if she wants to. It's the last chance you'll get. Thank you. Can we scare him off? Haven't you learned anything since you passed on? Passed on? He ain't passed on. None of us are passed on. I only wish we could. We can't make people see us. You know that. Either they can or they can't. It ain't up to us. <laughs> such a noisy woman. I used to think it was the wind. Well, it ain't. Hello, Sean Atwood, London-based author. And... Uh, 
Uh, still going on. I say, could you hear a motor car? Only just. Go and tell her we've had enough, will you? Up them stairs. Can you see anything? Not much. It's a light out there. Two cars. It's country. The state is too chap. Who the other one is? Always tolls after a death in the family. Strange, isn't it? Very, very curious. You mean the place is haunted? The villagers say it is. And what do you think? Well, let's say I wouldn't like to spend the night here all alone. You wouldn't be me, old cock. Funny. Funny! I thought I put that in the cellar. You did? But he got it out again. Well, which one's that one? Well, that's Sir George Uffraw. General. General Uffraw, he was. It's a bit dim. Ah, well, you know what it is with the varnish on the... Oh. Uh, <laughs> yes, well, I... I think he was, rather. Insufferable chump. He was known as Crocodile Uffraw, you know. Really? Yes, he was campaigning in Egypt and had to cross the Nile to attack the enemy. Unfortunately, there wasn't time to build a bridge, so he ordered the regiment to swim across. Ah! And when they told him that part of the river was infested with crocodiles, he made his famous remark that one British soldier was a match for ten crocodiles. Yes, you see... He was wrong, as it happened. Wrong? Yes. One crocodile turned out to be a match for ten British soldiers. Did he continue the attack after that? No, no, no. no. Well, I mean... It Bartman and the old he built he crossed the wrong river he should see on this map well, what happened then well I, I, I'm afraid they had to swim back and of course the crocodiles were yeah. still there I guess well they did awfully well <laughs> but the remains of the regiment rejoined the campaign for the Battle of El Tazi where the general attacked with great dash and determination unfortunately because of all the smoke he lost his way and nearly wiped out her Majesty's eighth hussar. Oh, Judy, I was told. It was a wonderful family, you know, Mr. Penrose. Part of the fabric of English history. There's been an uproar at Motley Hall since the 16th century. 17th. Oh, do I mean the 17th? Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Yes, it was. Now the family is no more, and the dear old place must be sold. Hmm. Is there anyone interested? Oh, there's been a tentative inquiry from an American gentleman who wanted to take it to Las Vegas. <laughs> the whole place. Who's this Las Vegas? Well, they took no London idea. Bridge. It sounds totally foreign to me. Well, there's no chance here, of course, because Motley's listed. I don't understand. That's the one who was in the stables. That one? No, the thin one they're doing, anyway. Well, not yet. But then it's not been on the market all that long. Sir Humphrey only died a couple of months ago. Yeah, fine. <laughs> Poor Sir Humphrey. Mm. He left me this gold fountain pen, you know. It tends to leak a bit, but it, uh, it reminds me of him. Well, I don't want to alarm you, Mr. Gudgeon, but there is, of course, a possibility that the whole place may be, uh, unsafe. Not safe? Not safe? What makes you say that? Money. Please don't be alarmed. I'm only trying to warn you, that's all. After all, it has been empty for 20 years. The whole place may be running with damp, full of dry rot, woodworm, heaven knows what else. I but it isn't, Mr. Penrose. I assure you, it isn't. I've looked after Motley myself for years, a labor of love, and I can tell you it's in a splendid state of preservation. Well, yeah, yeah. well that's for me to decide, Mr. Gudgeon, uh, in my official capacity. And now, if you'll excuse me, I have a great deal to do. A shady deal, more like. Yes, of course. Yes. I'll drop the keys in at the office. All right, well, uh, good day to you then, Mr. Penrose. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. What a scoundrel! Oh, such a nasty face. And we're powerless to do anything about it. Mere onlookers. We need a plan. Yeah, I'm trying to think of one. Well, so am I, but my mind's a bit blank. Yeah. We're doomed. No, we ain't. We won't give up Motley without a fight. That's, well, that's the spirit. What are you beat up? You'll find out soon enough. That other villain's lurking by the stables. What? The other one I told you about. I've just seen him watching Goodwin drive off. How long's he been there? I don't know. He's coming. Ah, so that was your Mr. Gudgeon. 
Well, it seems harmless enough. Have you been waiting long? And since three o'clock, it came at half past two, just to be on the safe side. Uh, where did you leave the car? Oh, I didn't come up here by car, my dear fellow. Walked across the field. Pretty good exercise. And a little less conspicuous than the... Uh, Richard? He's full of himself, isn't he? I've uh, brought your expenses. That's the cash. Come on. I don't suppose that's going to make any trouble, will it? Well, he'll try. Wait! Uh, he'll be too late. Oh, yes, much too late. The demolition boys will have moved in by then, and we've got to tear the whole place apart. Quick! And it'll all be quite as before. Oh, I dare say there'll be a bit of a stink about it, but it'll be much too late by then. Ah, that's the advantage oh, of my having a friend in the right place. Look out! I mean, after all, there's no... I'm in the coat! I mean, there's no point in breaking the law. It's a foregone conclusion. A piece of cake. Pretty quick of you, Penrose. Quite a little conjurer, aren't you? Uh, don't play games, really. Games? You're the one who's playing games. It was a very good little trick, that. <laughs> but the case was empty. You know it was. Are you serious? Well, of course I am. You must think I'm stupid, Penrose. Oh, no. I don't think you're stupid, but I think you think I am. Oh, it awfully well, isn't it? <laughs> Take the money, then you pretend the trigger didn't bring any money. The case was full when it got here. Then why was it empty when I opened it? It was not empty. It was. It was uh, empty. <laughs> empty? <laughs> but I, I, I've never seen that before. Then how did you get out of your coat? I don't know. I don't know. Ah, I told you were a tricky customer to deal with, Penrose, but I never thought you'd try anything as childish as this. Now, look here. The look deal's now. off. Penrose, I can't do business with such naive dishonesty. It's too embarrassing. Besides, I've got plenty of other contacts. I'll get rid of Muckley Hall without help from your department. Mr. Gadget, sir. It's as good as a play, isn't it? I know he'd be back. How? I pinched his pen thing. Good for you. I'll have the keys back now, Mr. Penrose. I think I've seen and heard quite enough. I only came back for my fountain pen. You haven't seen it, have you? My, my, my. What a lot of money. Mr. Uh, Brailing. James Brailing. Brailing, eh? I have a terrible memory for names, but I hope I never forget yours. Ah. I think you'd better leave too, Mr. Penrose. There's my fountain pen. Huh. Well, Motley Hall is in an excellent state of preservation, Mr. Penrose. Bravo. <laughs> 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 Good old Matt, you mean? Yes, dear boy, I can kiss you. Oh, <laughs> plenty different from everybody. Else. I know we could do it. So did I. You see, we ain't just lookers on, are we, Sir George? No. No, we've something to strive for, at last. A common girl. Long live us, say I. Long live the ghosts of Motley Hall. Yeah, there, yeah. Here. 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 Right then, Fanny, let's get this picture up. Well, at least we've still got a wall to put it on. Come on, then. I need to show you that. Yeah, we'll do it all right. 